Hello, I am Dr. Christina Susan, a pediatric urologist at the Children's Hospital of Michigan. Today, I'm going to talk to you about urinary tract infections in children with neurogenic bladder and bowel. This includes children with spina bifida, spinal cord injuries, and other more rare causes. Now, why is the pediatric urologist concerned about the child with neurogenic bladder and bowel? We have two major concerns. The first is to protect the kidneys. One way that we can prevent injury to the kidneys is by preventing urinary tract infections and treating them promptly. We also want to identify other processes that could harm the kidneys, such as vesicoureteral reflux or high bladder pressures. Our second goal is to help your child become dry, but not at the expense of the kidneys. Now, how would you know if your child has a urinary tract infection? It is especially important to recognize the symptoms as in, in infants, as they cannot complain. They may develop a fever, but not have any other obvious symptoms. A high fever with a urinary tract infection is especially concerning because often it means that there is a kidney infection rather than a bladder infection. Infants may be fussier than usual or alternatively sleepier. Sometimes the urine may appear bloody. Other times it may develop a different odor or appear cloudy. Your infant may throw up and be unable to keep down feeds or may refuse to eat. While many older children can articulate how they are feeling, those with neurogenic bladders often are unable to sense pain on urination or localize their discomfort. Again, fever is a concerning symptom. They may just not feel well. Sometimes they want to sleep more or are less active than usual. If your child is typically continent, he or she might experience increased urinary accidents. Complaints of nausea or decreased appetite and vomiting are also common. One of the major causes of urinary tract infections is urinary retention. This means that the urine is sitting in the bladder for a long time or that the bladder is not getting adequately emptied. If your child is having urinary tract infections and has urinary retention, we usually recommend emptying the bladder with a catheter on a timed basis. Children with neurogenic bladder are at increased risk from infection, so we usually recommend using a new catheter each time. Constipation is another large contributor to urinary tract infections. In constipation, stool accumulates in the rectum. More stool in the rectum equals more bacteria on the perineum, the space between the rectum and the urethra. More bacteria, more infections. Sometimes, if your child has had multiple infections or has vesicoureteral reflux, we'll recommend a prophylactic antibiotic. This is a low-dose daily antibiotic whose job is to prevent but not treat infections. Sometimes, your doctor may recommend, in special circumstances, washing the bladder through a catheter. Now, I've mentioned vesicoureteral reflux a couple of times. Vesicoureteral reflux is a condition where the urine goes from the bladder back up to the kidney. Typically, the end of the ureter acts as a one-way valve. It allows urine into the bladder, but not back up. If there are bacteria in the urine in the bladder and the urine goes up to the kidney, that's direct access for a kidney infection. We try to prevent infections in all children, but while bladder infections are a nuisance, kidney infections can damage the kidneys. To identify vesicoureteral reflux, your child would have a voiding cystourethrogram, or VCUG. We perform those at birth in children with spina bifida to screen for reflux. We also perform them if your child has a urinary tract infection associated with a fever. Finally, we'll obtain them if there is new or changing hydronephrosis or swelling in the kidney. That's diagnosed with ultrasound, which we perform at birth and then on a regular basis thereafter. I hope that you found this talk helpful. Thank you for your attention.